I, from another world. A smell detector, investigating the path ahead. We don't often see a snail that way. And that's because we've only recently had the tiny lenses and electronic cameras that we need to explore this miniature world. But when we meet its inhabitants face to face, we suddenly realize that their behavior can be just as meaningful to us as the behavior of many animals more our own size. Look at this, for example. It's an earwig, yes. But it's also a female and a mother. And like so many mothers, she's guarding her young. These two ants are not quite sure whether they like one another. Stroking antennae is the equivalent of a cautious chat over the garden fence. When big animals go courting, they show off, and so do damselflies. Courtship signals for the male wolf spider are rather more frantic, because if his female doesn't understand why he's approaching her, she'll eat him. This ant is a farmer, and these aphids, the cows, which it milks for a drink of honeydew every day. Other ants are eternally on the march. Powerfully armed soldiers guard the flanks of their column as they travel, protecting the workers who are carrying their helpless young. When it comes to craftsmanship, few can beat this wasp using mud to construct an elegant jar in which to store her eggs. Mud is also used by termites. They build tower blocks that in proportion to their size are taller than New York skyscrapers. These two worlds, ours and theirs, influence one another to an extraordinary degree. If we and the rest of the backbone animals were to disappear overnight, the rest of the world would get on pretty well. But if they were to disappear, the land's ecosystems would collapse. For the fact is, they were the pioneers, the first animals of any kind to colonize the lands of the Earth. To tell their story, we must go back to a time when the world was a very different place. <laughs>